it's the next level. Rhetoric's still active. Where is it? I have no idea. He moves location constantly. And every widow is sedated on entry and exit for maximum security. It's finding it hard to believe that he could stay off my radar. Well, it's not smart to attack an Avenger if you want to stay hidden. I mean, the clue is in the name. Drakov kills you. One of the big ones comes to avenge you. Wait, what are the big ones? Well, I doubt the god from space has to take an ibuprofen after a fight. Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about Marvel Disney's Black Widow 2021 that just came out. And Steve and I just, you know, can't wait to talk about this movie. It was fun to watch. I got to see it in the theater, came home, and I watched it a few more times because, you know, Disney Plus premiere. You got that. So I had a Good time watching that and having a good time taking notes and taking it all in. That is Black Widow. So, Black Widow, 2021. All right, the synopsis of this particular movie, and if you've been living under a rock for the past year and a half to two years, I don't know. But in Marvel Studios' action-packed spy thriller Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. Black Widow, confronts the darker parts of her ledger when a dangerous conspiracy with ties to her past arises. Pursued by a force that will stop at nothing to bring her down, Natasha must deal with her history as a spy and the broken relationships left in her wake long before she became an Avenger. So that I got off right off of IMDb. I wasn't going to go straight to Disney's platform. I just wanted to Strange idea, but it basically gives us an idea of a synopsis of uh, what's going on. Even if you were not a Marvel goer or somebody who watched the movies, this was definitely a cool spy thriller. And with that, we're just going to move right along and go right into our initial thoughts. So, Steve, what were your initial thoughts? I loved it. You know, I, I don't know if it's just because it's the first time being back in the theater in since, like, I think Bad Boys for Life was the, the last movie I saw in the actual theater. But what amazed me, the thing, and I think like there was like me and maybe like six or eight other people I went to a matinee showing. And so it was it was a very small crowd, but it was a it was a the huge grand infinity at the Warren Theater. So it's like an IMAX size screen. And it was it was just great. I teared up, man. I teared up in the previews. I was like, I'm getting choked up. Because I'm watching previews, you know, and uh, I'll just I'll give us a, a little little quick one for anybody who's out this that you're, if you like musical movies. I'm not a huge fan of musical movies, but I think this one's going to be good. It's Jennifer Hudson starring as Aretha Franklin, Ooh. and uh, it sound it, it from the preview I saw it looked really good. So I'm excited for that. But uh, this movie, you know, uh, like I said, I, I hope it's not just the nostalgia of being in a theater, but I think it, I thought it was really great. And I hope other people agree. I hope the critics liked it. Uh, David Harbour and, and Florence Pugh absolutely knock it out of the park, <laughs> yeah. man. Um, I, I can't wait for us to, to, to dig a little deeper into this. Um, there's one thing that I was a little confused about that we'll talk about that I'm, I'm sure with your knowledge of the Marvel movie, movies you can clear up for me i'll try i'll do my best but yeah my initial thoughts I, I loved it just like you and i thought before the movie even started i was starting to think it's been over a year since i've been to a movie theater and it was weird and the first thing i thought as i'm sitting there and just with the trailers or even the movie just starting these people are really ticking me off <laughs> in the row ahead of me everybody was like i, I guess they got stuck in their own home etiquette and just doing whatever they want oh. but uh, i i felt like oh man i don't want to go to a movie i i love the idea of treasuring and seeing it at home i, mm -hmm. I guess i'm just such a recluse <laughs> i don't know but it it was good to be and feel the interaction smell the popcorn eat the popcorn have your drink just watch the movie on the big screen obviously i don't have a big screen like that nobody would unless they're a billionaire like 
Tony Stark. <laughs> but, you know, uh, to me, but we, we also have been waiting so long for this movie. And at the end, I think we understand why we waited so long which we will talk within our notes or my notes as it were and uh, i like you i love david harbour florence Pugh did steal the movie Absolutely. a lot with her character as always for and as always my love for rachel vice i i love her she's just amazing she's beautiful she's very intelligent she's married to a bond mm -hmm. you know it, it's like i i loved all the roles that she has taken over the years you know i think she came on my radar when she did the mummy with uh brandon fraser years ago and you know i i just love seeing her on film yeah she's great yeah so with that we'll move right along right into our top fives of black widow 2021 it's a fighting pose you're a total poser I'm not a poser <laughs> Oh, come on. I mean, they're in great poses, but it does look like you think everyone's looking at you, like, all the time. All that time that I spent posing, I was trying to actually do something good to make up for all the pain and suffering that we caused. Trying to be more than just a trained killer. So, you, you, want, you don't mind, I'll go ahead and start. Because sure. I, this is, this is my, my confusion, is kind of the timing of this movie. Because at the beginning... You know, she's got the red hair, and yes. we can tell that that's right after Ultron. I, yes, age, right. And but then at the end, and this is the part that uh, that confused me because I thought this took place right before Civil War, Captain America: Civil War. Is is this supposed because it's, it's the yes. same time frame? It's the same time, yes. twenty sixteen. So so what confused me was. And I, I kind of wish we had just gotten a line of dialogue right there at the end or something that to explain because, you know, <sighs> Natasha sends her family and the other Black Widows off in the, the plane and she says, I'll take care of, uh, you know, uh, General Ross. I'll wait here and I'll hold him off or something like that. Are we just to assume that she got away from him? Somehow, I mean, he's literally... Well, yeah, that, that was a problem I had with the film, too, because literally at the very end, you see her, and they're all saying, and she's waiting there for Ross to come take her away. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then, they, and then they click to the other guy, I forget his name, they, but... Yeah, they click to two weeks, and it, you know, the graphic comes up two weeks later, and I'm like, what happened in those two weeks? It, it, yeah. Or, yeah, what happened with Ross, and yeah. what happened with that? That was the only big flaw and issue I had with the movie. Yeah. Honestly, and all and, we needed, and, all we and to needed correct from, you, go ahead. The, it's literally after Civil War because she states to Steve at one point that she had some business to take care of. Okay, so it's it's after Civil it's after Civil War. So then it's right before Infinity. Infinity. Yes, exactly. It's okay, right so before Infinity War. So because yeah. she says she's go because that's that's what what confused me because she's got the blonde hair. Correct. And it says it says two weeks later, and she says I've got to go break some friends out of prison yes. to deal with something. And yes. I couldn't remember if that was Civil War or Infinity War. No, Infinity, no, no. It, it, was, it was between Civil War and Infinity War. At the okay. very end, she goes, I have something to do to okay. Steve, literally during the funeral. Okay. At uh, T'Challa's, uh, was it T'Challa or uh, the father? The father's funeral. Okay. And uh, she basically stated that, but then things f went into like full swing during Civil War and then at the very end, it kind of left it open-handed when you saw, you know, everything fall apart. And then that's when she went. So she, okay, her her first like uh, Avengers family fell apart. So she went back, was trying to get herself stabilized within this particular movie, and then found right. herself dealing with her older family. Yeah, no, no, I, I get all that. I was just confused about the timing. Yeah. Of it. So this is yeah. in between Civil War and Infinity. Infinity War, it was Infinity War, right? Yes. Because it's end game. Yeah. Infinity War end game. I haven't I need to rewatch those movies, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you you you're right. It, it was like literally it was a, a lot of timing and a lot of weirdness. Yeah. Going and all on. we needed all we needed was a quick line of dialogue from her about uh, I can't believe I got away from General Ross or, or something like that. You know, just something real quick to this guy because, you know, he says, see what I can do when I have time and money. You yeah. Know? And it got a Quinjet. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that, that's great. I just want to know how she got away from Ross. 
Yeah, exactly. Same here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe Good, maybe they could do that one. as like a little webisode or something. And it's like, yeah. hey, give us a little bit more. Come on, Scarlet. I'm glad I'm not the only one that was confused by that. No, no, I I was really ticked off at that. That was the biggest issue I had with the movie. Yeah, if anything. Okay. But yeah, uh, yeah, I do agree with you. And my number five would be first and foremost the action in the movie. Come on, this movie was filled with so much action, and I just love when Nat and Yelena break Alexi out of the prison. That was one of my favorite action scenes in the movie. It was so ongoing. The humor within it. That was by far the most memorable and favorite scenes that I had. Plus all the scenes with Taskmaster when we first see see them on on screen, and I've been waiting so long to see it. Uh, the ending scene was extremely intense with uh, Melina destroying the flying compound that they had <laughs> for the Red Room. That I enjoyed immensely. I yeah. loved it. She just did, had was like no Fs giving, just like <laughs> shooting up in the air, destroying everything. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, guys. And but this is what was to propel the story to its end, uh, no pun intended either. <laughs> yeah. But but it, it to me those scenes were like really really cool. Yeah, that was great. I loved when she you know uh, um, Drakov Drakov uh, locks her out of the system so she can't do it through the computer. So like you said, she starts shooting above her head and she tells Yelena, uh, "We're going into a controlled crash." Like <laughs> what's a, what the heck is a controlled crash? <laughs> like, there is no such thing as a no controlled crash. Thing. Yeah, I was like, I heard her say controlled crash, and I was like, no, you're just gonna crash. All yeah, right? that, that, it's like, hold on, this is a controlled flat spin. No, there is not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell exactly. that to Tom Cruise and uh, Top Gun. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for me, the, the next one I have is just just all the humor throughout the movie. I love the way Marvel is able to balance the action, the drama, mm. and and the the humor in these movies. I think they they do really well. I did not look at, to see who wrote this one, but gosh, they did a really really great job. Uh, I loved <laughs> probably my two favorite scenes, obviously of, of uh, our comed that were comedic uh, was David Harbor trying to put his costume, his old costume on. And he's like, still fits, you know. <laughs> I'm like, that's like me when I tried to put my, a few years ago, I tried to put my old uh, Air Force uniform on and yeah, that wasn't happening. Um, yeah, so. I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was really great. I loved, the other scene I loved was, uh, it's it's this dramatic scene where he's trying to talk to Yelena and he's trying to convince her to come out of the, the, the room after they had this big fight at the table. And he tells her this, st this story of his father and him ice fishing. And he goes, and he made toilet. On my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I love like, that. I love that. In the middle of this dramatic scene, he's like, he made toilet on my he hands. He made toilet right on my hands. <laughs> she goes, oh. I, I had to look it up. I had to look it up because he says 35. He says uh, <laughs> human urine is 35 degrees or something like that. And I was like, is that right? And I looked it up and, and 35 degrees Celsius is like 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's hot. Like That is think, hot. At least know. it's warm enough. Uh, yeah. Right. I we'll just don't wash your face with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, the humor in the movie was great. Yeah, the humor, especially with Yelena too, when they get off the helicopter after it crashes, we we have. Uh, uh, he goes, "Well, we have enough fuel to get us to St. Petersburg." Yeah, Are you sure? Yeah, okay. And then it crashes, and they come out. But he's trying to like get in touch with his daughters, quote unquote daughters, and Yelena's like he's hugging her, and he goes, "And you smell." <laughs> he, uh, I think he would smell being in prison all that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I do enjoy that. And David Harbour was so great in this movie too. My number four, I, I love the whole feel about a broken family story mm -hmm. within the movie. And that goes back because Yel Yelena left the one thing that she didn't want returned to her. <laughs> she didn't think she was going to go to Budapest. <laughs> or Budapest, or Budapest, uh, depending on how you say it. And of course, you know, you know, Nat has to say it like Budapest with the proper <laughs> enunciation of how they say it out there. Uh, Elena felt that they uh, that the family they had for three years when they were kids, when she was what she was six, I think, something like that. Yeah, and Nat was way older at that point. But they, they were a real family for three years, and that was mm -hmm. real to her. And I really felt that. That was such such good writing. And now I'm um, more understanding about the whole long 
intro that we got with it and how they were and how they interacted. Then at the end, you know, Nat comes to realize that she has been blessed to have not one, but two families. And she goes back to repair the Avengers family that she left behind. And that's why she wants to go back. And that's where we get her for Infinity War. And that's how we start Infinity War at that point where, you know, she she gets those those people out of prison. And to me, you know, it, that was a lot of heart and soul in this movie. And I understand why it took so long for us to get it, not just because of the pandemic, but also you know, them delaying it, there are other, there are other factors because we have Disney plus and they already had a long scheme of what we were going to get within the show or the shows and the MCU itself and how they were going to do the storytelling. Now, mind you, it didn't really affect it too much, but it affected it enough to where when you saw this movie and you saw that end credit scene, you know, oh, okay, that was supposed to be so-and-so's first appearance within the MCU and you know it's already been done because of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, and I wonder if they if they did any kind of re-edit or anything because really I wonder I wonder if there was a what am I trying to say here? I wonder if there was a longer end credit scene that would have been more of an introduction of Val because mm. we because we were supposed to get this movie before Falcon and the Winter Soldier, right? Yes, long yes. before Falcon. Correct. And so they they would have they needed to they would have had to have some sort of thing or some some sort of lines that that would put her uh, that would explain to who she was. Uh, if it's just you know Yelena talking to some woman and calling her Val, the internet would have exploded with who is this person? You know, <laughs> um, with the purple streak in her hair. <laughs> yeah, and and so it's 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 it, it's actually it's, it's fortuitous kind of for him, I think that it went this this direction. So yes, uh, my next one is <laughs> maybe it's because I saw it on the gigantic uh, Grand Infinity IMAX screen, or I don't know if it was IMAX, <laughs> Grand Infinity, and I was and like they didn't have the balcony open, so I couldn't go to the balcony. Uh, take, I couldn't watch it from the balcony, so I'm watching it from the floor. But there were a lot of butt shots in this movie, man. Like, I don't, oh yeah, don't get me don't get me wrong. I don't mind looking at ScarJo's butt and Florence Pugh's butt at all, <laughs> and even a couple shots of Rachel Wise climbing up into the helicopter there. I'm all about it, man. But yeah. it just seemed like like there was a point in the movie where I was like going, I was like, does this guy have a does this director have a session with butts? Butts? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there's one there's one point where there's a whole there's a good two or three seconds. It, it, I mean, I guess maybe I'm really obsessing too much about the butts, but like Scarjo's <laughs> butt is like right there for like yeah. two or three good second good long. Oh, seconds, I know, I know what you know? Thing you're talking about. <laughs> it's when she grabs the gas container and she moves back, and I'm yeah. looking at the pants going, wait, that looks like a butt. <laughs> Flap on going, that that I, pants. I'm going. And, uh, what, what is the deal here? I don't mind it, but man, it just seemed a little. It just was a little crazy. Uh, there's an me. old meme out there of when they were filming the first Avengers, and it was, I think, uh, Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans and somebody else looking at Scar Joe's. But <laughs> and he goes, oh, hearth the us or something like that. Yeah. But the thing is, is that, you know, well, maybe this director has something like that. You know, Quentin Tarantino has been notorious for shooting feet. Yeah. So maybe this is that particular director's thing. Now, mind you, uh, I had gotten to a discussion with my, my niece, Madison, who, you know, and she goes, yeah, the, they were all talking about how they de-sexualized Scarlett Johansson's version of Black Widow over the years, I said, well, honestly, I don't mind that. It, yeah. it, in the very beginning, if you remember it, in Iron Man 2, I believe, she comes in, and she is very much sexualized within that movie. Come the first Avengers, in the very beginning scene, when she's strapped down in a chair, she's being sexualized at that point, being... Mm -hmm. Somebody to entrap somebody uh, into something and being like a helpless woman who is beautiful. And then later on, they kind of switch that where she becomes more of a stronger emotional person, which I do enjoy. I really enjoy that fact. And I'm loving the fact that we get this kind of character because I'm not saying 
for like an example for you know women out there girls out there for for the fact that it's more pure and you know mind you we can sexualize male characters out there as well which you know which would be funny because we've already seen that with jason momoa and aquaman every woman went to the movies to go see that but it to me it it, it shows proof in the writing and the character development yeah. and they've really developed this character and at this point we got a great movie within this character herself and it's so sad because now we have to say goodbye to this character because you know even scarlett johansson stated it recently within like like interviews and stuff like yeah this is my last time portraying natasha romanoff as black widow yeah so you know it, unless they could do something with the mystical worlds of an alternate universe and have her come back, that would be amazing. You know, obviously this movie has debunked my thoughts of Yelena, you know, with her face being taken off and then portraying as Nat, that's been debunked, which I'm fine with, but it, it's really upsetting for the fact that we don't get more Natasha mm -hmm. Romanoff and Black Widow. Yeah. 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 So that was mine. What's your next one? Well, I love the fact that Marvel Disney had changed Taskmaster to Antonia Drakoff. And that was hinted way back, if you think about it, in the first Avengers movie when Loki asks Nat when he stuck in that prison that they meant for Hulk. And he goes, and he was kind of like questioning her. And she goes, oh, I have too much blood, you know, red in my ledger. Because really, you could get that rid of that much red out of your ledger? Drakoff's daughter? Do you think you could wash away that much red? So back then, we didn't have a clue. If you weren't a comic book reader, or even inside Marvel Disney at that point, you would have no clue mm -hmm. as to what they were talking about. Now it's coming to realization. It's like, oh, she was responsible for what she thought was the death of Antonia Drakoff. And when I, we got to that point, when you saw Taskmaster, everything was pointing towards Drakoff. I was putting a lot of two and two together while in the theater going, I'm wondering if it's Drakoff's daughter and she never really died. Something happened to her and they're controlling her kind of like the, the women in the red room because mm -hmm. that's what Yelena goes through and she explains everything about how they're being controlled and Taskmaster is the pet toy that Drakov has which is his own daughter yeah and he goes into it with the, putting a chip in the back of her and you know she doesn't look normal she's got that kind of death lock look to her when she takes off the helmet and you know that was a lot that they had to write in and I thought, honestly, it was great. And that's kudos to the writers out there. Yeah, it was great for them to take a, a plot point from so many years ago and basically twist it around that it never actually happened and use it for this movie. It was great. And I, I don't know if we're going to see the character again. I hope we are. I hope. And this is I, I was going to say this when we talked about the end credit scene as well with mm -hmm. that setting up with with Hawkeye and Yelena that I wonder if we're going to get the Black Widows again in the Hawkeye TV show. Oh is, yeah, is what I'm hoping is is that we're going to see and uh, maybe get some other stuff in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, my next one, we've talked about a lot of what I've already I already kind of had, so I'm just going to go on a couple of my favorite scenes that I really really liked and uh, the, like the the whole face switching thing <laughs> between Rachel Weisz and and uh, Scarlett Johansson was great. I completely caught me totally off guard uh, until that moment when it's revealed. Same here. And yeah. it's just, it, it, it's another one of those humorous moments that running gag of David Harbour, every time he's opening up and trying to do something, <laughs> you know, emotional <laughs> with somebody, it ends up like the, the, in the helicopter that he didn't have, he didn't have a headset. They couldn't hear him. And, you know, all these things. And then in this one, the cell, he's not actually talking to Natasha. He's talking to his wife. And it's just like, Oh my goodness. So I, that caught me. And then the other thing that I really, another thing I really love that's kind of in that same ballpark with that is as soon as he started, they started talking about, he started talking about his pheromones. I was like, Oh, she's going to break her nose. And then of course we get that confirmed when we get the scene of them talking about yes. the plan. <laughs> and uh, I just, it was, 
it was, I just, I had to laugh when she kept taunting him with how badly, how, uh, how his punches were. And finally there at the end, she's like, and you still didn't punch good enough. I'm going to have to do this myself. And she just <laughs> bashes her face into the, uh, into the, the desk there to, to break it. So it was just, uh, just a great scene. Definitely. I, I loved all those scenes. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, my next one would be Alexi and Melina. I just love Alexi because in the beginning of the movie, you, you can see his love for the girls. He loved both of them equally. Yeah, yeah, it was another mission for him. And yeah, it was kind of one of those. And he kind of states it in the helicopter. He goes, oh, I was put on a mission and I had to do this and I was so bored. <laughs> so bored. And it's like, oh my God. And it's like, you could tell Yelena's getting pissed off about it. Like, kind of, oh, I was cast aside. That was my world. And you could see it breaking her heart. Mm -hmm. But even though it was a mission, he did love them genuinely. Yeah. As well as Melina. They both knew it was a job, but both Alexi and Melina, and yes, even Yelena thought of themselves as family, but Nat really didn't see it that way. And you don't see that until that conversation between Melina and Nat when they are switching personas at that point. And you could see the tearing up in both Rachel and Scarlett's eyes when they're presenting that dialogue about that love. And I just love when Alexi just starts singing Miss American Pie to Yelena in that room. It hit all the feels, and I, I did shed a tear for that scene in a theater. It showed that he did care and love for this girl and this lady. And he saw her as like his own daughter. And it's, it kind of rang through even till that, you know, when he was in the helicopter. My girls, they come and get me. And, you know, I just love how she, uh, you know, it's like you're the crimson guard or <laughs> yeah. crimson dynamo. And he goes, it's the red guardian yeah and the uh, crimson dynamo actually is a character in the marvel universe which is so funny oh nice but but the funny thing is is that uh that that was i think we talked about it last year when we were talking about black widow but you know there was like this thought of oh in the prison somebody comes out they're gonna be a mutant but obviously it's not it's just red guardian himself alexi and him being a super soldier, the first and only super soldier out of Russia. And I just love his, like, he's like, uh, I see him as, like, my contemporary, <laughs> you know, Captain America. And he's yeah. always asking, and, he, and the one thing that he brings up to Nat is, like, he's asking literally about himself to Nat about Captain America. Has he talked to me? <laughs> he talked about me. Now, mind you, he was, it was brought up, and one of the writers or, or the producers, I think, was actually within that that arm wrestling scene too, if you don't recall, if you, you, you could see him, he's kind of a short slanky guy. It was the guy just before he snaps or breaks the guy's wrist. Oh, that's nice. bigger than he is. But, uh, it, it's funny because he was going on and on and he talked, he goes, I don't know, 1980 something. He goes, <laughs> uh, Captain America was in ice then. <laughs> and it's yeah. true. And I, I think Alexi was just like, you know, it's like, uh, I came after Captain America. So he is this thing of like competition. Yeah. Which just made me love the character even more. You know, he's a little bit delusional, not too smart, <laughs> but he has a good heart as it is. And that's what really led me to love him a lot. I love the cut scene when Nat and Melina come up with the scheme to dupe the Red Room and exchange their identities. You already brought it up with the... Mm -hmm. The masks, we've already seen that before when we were watching Falcon and Winter Soldier, if you recall. Remember uh, mm -hmm. uh, Agent yeah. Carter? Agent or, Carter uses that, yeah. Yep, she uses that, and they, they use that again. So that's a common thing that they used. Um, unfortunately, they only had so many earpieces <laughs> to <laughs> use. Uh, and unfortunately, like I stated, you know, Alexi was not in on the plan and had no earpiece. And I just love the fact that, you know, he's like, opening himself up to Melina and Melina's like, no, he goes, and he keeps going on and on. He goes, you have no earpiece. What? No earpiece. <laughs> yeah. Oh, why? <laughs> yeah. I thought that, that whole scene was great. It's amazing. Um, let's see. I'm trying to recall if there's anything else that I really 
I, I, I can't wait to watch it again because it's, it was really, really good. Gosh, man, go ahead with your last one. Cause I'm kind of, I'm kind of tapped out. I'm searching for scenes in my head I that, uh, that I, I, that I can pull out that were really good. Um, I thought it was, I will say this real quick. I thought it was great when they get to uh, Natasha's apartment there in Budapest at uh, Budapest. And uh, she says, Yelena says, well, what kind of, what kind of bullet does those, does, uh, does those marks and oh, Natasha yeah. says arrows. <laughs> so yeah. Which, yeah. Which is a Easter egg to her encounter. And that was her way of getting out of the red mm -hmm. room and working with Clint. And right. those were arrows. Those were Clint's arrows yeah. when they were in Budapest, which is uh, amazing. It was a great callback to that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to get any flashbacks to that, but I would love to see those. My last one, which would be uh, a lot of what I liked overall within this movie, was that it was not a current day Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. This is a past event. This is like from like 2016 or 2017 at that point. The last event of Black Widow. Unfortunately, this is, you know, the last we'll see of Natasha Romanoff, and I really think it's really sad that, you know, that's all we get, unless somebody in the Disney Marvel writing team is out there and comes out with some sort of variant of Black Widow. I don't know, but it's just me teasing my way of saying, hey, write this in. We want more ScarJo mm -hmm. <laughs> out there, but, but this was her swan song for the MCU, but left us looking at more to come more with Yelena which I will talk more within my notes and we could just move right along within our notes yeah all right well what I was trying to explain is that very ending scene that you brought up between Val and Yelena and I just love how it's like uh the dog was named Fanny <laughs> Fanny what was it Fanny Longbottom, Fanny Longbottom yeah was uh the the name that uh yeah, the French guy. The French yeah. guy had made it. I don't know who he was, but he, the French he, guy who was like her, he was her contact and go to mm -hmm. to get all her stuff. But you know, she named the dog, and she mentioned that during that one scene. How she goes, ah, I don't see any kids. I would have a dog, so she finally got a dog. But obviously, Yelena is working for Val. She gets paid, and she mentions something about vacation, not having a real vacation because there she is, Val. Mm -hmm. And how did Val get there right away like that? Literally, we saw him, like, literally, mo like, a few moments before, Val was not there. And out of the blue, she shows up. Yeah. Like, what? Something out of the TVA. Well, she just shows up out of the blue, opening a door or window, and just is there, blowing her nose, sneezing, or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Do they have something that we don't know? So, and then we know that she's working for Val. She's paid very much like, uh, what's his name in Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Uh, the fake captain. And Oh, uh, U.S. agent. Yeah, John U.S. Carter. agent. Yeah, yeah John Carter. Carter. So we got them. We already know that. She's building up a team. And I've mentioned this before, and I'm thinking the Thunderbolts. Because you... You got Zemo as well, mm -hmm. and you got a whole bunch of people that they could pull from. But I'm really thinking that we're going to see Yelena and Hawkeye in that show on Disney+. Plus. And I really think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's my thoughts on that. That's one of my notes. Okay. You have any notes? Or? I don't at the moment. Um, like I said, I only got a chance to watch it once and was just very excited to talk about it. All right, well, one other note, which is pretty cool. I, I love the fact that we get a little foreshadowing within the scene when Nat was watching a James Bond movie. One of my favorite movies as a kid, Moonraker. And with all Bond films, it seems to be a trope that the villain gives away his plot before they are taken down, which Drakeoff does. <laughs> if yeah. you think about it, she kind of like manipulates him to explain everything before she severs the nerve and does mm -hmm. all that. Uh, it's so hilarious to get to that point. I really enjoyed that. Plus the fact that the Red Room was in the air, just very much similar to within Moonraker. Moonraker was in space, obviously, but this was in air. So it was pretty cool to have that equation to that particular movie as well. And plus Taskmaster can be looked at kind of like Jaws within Moonraker itself in the film. 
he was, you know, in the movie he was used by the the big bad to do his own bidding and stuff like that. And at the very end, he tries to help. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Next one would be, uh, I just love that Yelena makes the joke that Matt does the superhero landing and flips her hair up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was great. I love it when she did that follows you the vent and she goes, Ugh, such yeah, a poser. Like in disgust. Yeah, yeah such a poser. <laughs> <laughs> that had me on a full laughing when I watched well, it. And, and if you if you didn't catch it, I'm sure you did because you had multiple viewings. Um, Taskmaster even does that move. Yes. They're fighting each other. And and then later I caught that line from Drakov where he says uh that she can mimic whoever she's fighting. Well and, or what she has seen. Yeah. And the thing also is you could see the claw snapping from, like, uh, Black Panther, mm -hmm. the kick up of the shield from, like, uh, Bucky right. when he was the Winter Soldier, uh, a lot of things that Cap has done, Bart has done. Yeah, Black she's got Widow it all. Has, she's got it all. Everything. She She's memorized and mimicked everything. And that's the whole point of Taskmaster. That's They, they learn every... and. She had a had a whole catalog of moves and movement within fighting schemes to work with people, <laughs> and uh, they they brought that all out within this movie. Yeah, and I really love it. And that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, my notes. Well, you've got one here, and I, I want to talk about it a little bit because it is a, it is a trope in the Marvel movies that the the few non powered superheroes that we have really do seem to heal and take beatings and recover oh, okay. rather quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like you said in your notes, we, we see her bounce off things to, to slow her fall through mm -hmm. the air. And there's basically, it has no effect on her. We've yes. seen this in, in other places and, and it's, it's just one of those tropes that we just have to spend our disbelief and yeah. just go, you know, they've got to have some way for a non super powered human to be with these super powered people, you know? So, yeah, I, I forgot. I left that in there. I didn't mention it, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I did have to suspend my disbelief because I was, I was like, wait, she fell off the top part of the building, mm -hmm. fell on this, fell on that, do this, mm -hmm. do that. But yet at least they acknowledge it to some degree. She goes, Oh, I thought you send one of your super friends, you know? <laughs> uh, and then she's looking, they're both changing and she could see, Yelena is seeing the yeah. bruises on her back. Yeah. And it shows that, yeah, she is human. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of those things are like really good coincidences that she's able to get through all this stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, and just like you, in, in, in quotes, what does Yelena say? She says something like, I'm sure Thor, the space god, doesn't need an ibuprofen after a bite. <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> I need an ibuprofen after a podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, you've got some quotes there uh my first one would be pain only makes us stronger and that was natasha saying that to melina mm -hmm. which she had learned from melina that was what had kept her alive all those years that was that little conversation as they were both changing identities and that's what really sparked a tear to my eye for the fact that you saw in melina's eyes that she did care for these kids mm -hmm. yes she was a puppet she was used just like alexi and the kids themselves but when yelena actually mentioned that i was one of those girls i was one of them that was being manipulated she didn't know where she was she didn't know who she was mm -hmm. where with natasha she was more with pheromones and that's what Drakeoff had a control on her for Whereas the others were controlled almost like with computer. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, the, that whole pain only makes us stronger. Was, it really hit hard. Next one would be, you should know that I'm better a better shot when I'm pissed off. And that was <laughs> Natasha to Taskmaster just after the car crash on the bridge in the very beginning of the, the movie. And then uh, Yelena just saying it to herself while she's in a helicopter she goes you're such a poser <laughs> and that was when after natasha lands with the superhero <laughs> landing yeah. and whipped the whip of the hair true this you know the true superhero landing which yeah. uh yeah you know, we all love but yeah, yeah those, those are the only few that i have from uh i i could have put a whole lot more but i don't want it to be like two hours long <laughs> this should be only a, a short one just giving our thoughts and 
what we appreciated about the movie, some of the flaws, but not too many. But overall, I think, honestly, in my opinion, a really, really good movie. It took way too long to get to where we are now to see this. Oh, I see. I, I, thought, I thought you meant like I, I thought you meant like a criticism of the movie that it was way too long. I was like, dude, it was great. <laughs> oh, it was great. No, it we, was over two to, hours. We, but we had to wait too long for it. We had to wait, yes. wait too yes. long. This yes. is ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna necessarily put this up there as one of my favorites, but it, it's definitely gonna be in the top ten, man. Because. Yeah, because it's I I really like David Harbour and like you said, for, like we talked about at the beginning, Florence Pugh, uh, they all just knock it out of the park, and so it's it's going to be up there for sure. It's going to be one that I'm going to want to watch again, mm -hmm. and it's it would be one that if I were purchasing physical media, I'd probably purchase a physical media for it. Yeah, same here. I always purchase all the Marvel media, but uh, I would put this definitely put this up in my top ten, and that goes along with. Uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. And that one I really loved because not just because the espionage, the writing in it was amazing. Yeah. As well as uh, Civil War as well, because uh, I just love that movie as, you know, as intensely as these. So yeah, uh, this, this takes place. Uh, it takes over a lot of others. You yeah. Know, there are little flaws. Yeah, I do agree, but <laughs> I enjoy it nonetheless. Overall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you want to just take us home? Yeah, well, uh, to submit your feedback, we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. If a rating is available, just give us a rating or a review if it's possible on those platforms. You can check out our website at uh, panels2pixelspodcast.com. Yep, or you could submit your theories and feedback and just go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And as always, we have the email, panels to pixels one at gmail.com, panels to pixels one, the TO spelled out right in the middle, the number one at gmail.com. And you could find us on YouTube as well. You could just search panels to pixels podcast and just please give us a thumbs up or subscribe. Next up for us is the final episode of Loki. It's been a great season so far, and we can't wait to see how Marvel wraps it up. So look for that later this week. But where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network, and we cover action films, adventure films, suspense films, thriller films, basically anything that gets your adrenaline going. So check me out on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. The last episode that I put out was Baby Driver. Look forward to Atomic Blonde coming out next, and that will be Wendy and I, and we'll be covering that. Very cool. And I send voicemails to all to many of our friends' podcasts and love to, to hear those, so check those out. All right. Well, I just love doing what we're doing, and we have fun with this, and I was so glad to see this film. I'm glad Steve and I got to, a chance to cover it within the time that the, the movie came out. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>